Ronna Draculas here, RK3 Designs. It's Tuesday night and we're live. So welcome guys. Um, actually tonight is our anniversary. So 25 years my husband and I came. <laughs> and you put up with me for this long, huh? I have put up with him for that long. So do Can I have my mic on, Kenny? I don't know yet. I do. I do have my mic on. I was checking. So we are glad to be here. We decided to be here with our favorite followers instead of going out and having a big old Put it up. steak dinner. So is it clicking out? Hold on, guys. I'm going to try to fix this. Just put it right here on. On here? Right here on your strap. Right here on my strap. Okay, we're going to put it right here. Hopefully we won't be cutting out. Let us know what the uh, audio sounds like, guys. All right, so tonight, literally, I don't know really what we're going to do. <laughs> I have an idea, but I have all these different ideas. So, cheers to us. Oh, yeah. So, cheers to us. 25 years. Um, so, I have these idea, but then I'll have all these other ideas, and all of a sudden, all the ideas are coming together. So, we may have epic fail tonight, or we may have a lot of fun. So, stick with us, and let me know at the end what you think. Um, so, like always... Guys, let me know where you're joining us from and uh, if you're a newbie here. So if you're a new viewer, let us know. I'd love to know that. Also, help us with our analytics and let us know if you're watching this actually live or if you're watching the replay. That would really help us out. Okay, so we're going to start off tonight. We're going to do kind of a granite. Actually, we're going to start off with a marble and because it's I'm feeling generous. I'm going to so, show you several different finishes, and we're all going to kind of morph it. Um, and so by the end, I don't know what we're going to end up have. Uh, marble granite. Who knows? So we're going to start off tonight with uh, I've mixed up some white opaque dye, and this is all stone coat countertop material. Now, I do have to give a disclaimer. This epoxy has been sitting in this cup for about 20 minutes already, so it's starting to get a little bit warm. Um, so we're going to start off with white opaque dye. We're going to start off uh, also add our clear and I've added a little bit of diamond dust but I've not added so much diamond dust that it's boom in your face. Then I just have white metallic mica powder mixed in. Okay and all of this is mixed opaquely. Okay so actually this is not quite opaque. I probably Not really. I could have added a little bit more. Actually, but kind of, it's kind of what I want. Actually, oh, this is good. So you don't want it opaque. Yeah, so I don't quite want it. So opaque. you're going to just this change is your opaque. mind. Hey, that's my prerogative. This is <clears throat> opaque. Okay, Bobby Brown. That is <laughs> be nice. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is this in a couple of pours and it really does kind of look cool. So I'm going to add a tiny bit of my white opaque dye into the clear and I'm just going to give it a little bit of a turn. Okay, I might add a little bit more than that. But I'm not mixing it. I just want to give it kind of a marble effect in the cup. All right. All right. So we're going to do that there. Then we're going to come in and I'm going to take, I think I'll start off light. I'm going to come in with stone gray. Um, Rust-Oleum paint, it's gloss, and I'm going to go just a couple of spray squirts in there, not a lot, okay, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm very lightly, and I'm kind of pulling it up so that it mixes. <laughs> oh my gosh, all got that what right. are y'all laughing about now? I'm glad somebody got it, Vamp. Oh. Okay, I'm not even going to go there. All right, so now we're going to just pour it out. Now, I've got quite a bit of white. You can see how it starts having color. Now, we're really not trying, I'm not really trying to do a dirty pour, per se, because we're going to kind of meld all this out. Now, my white mica powder is just that. It's just white mica powder. And then our clear, you know what, before I do my clear, I'm going to hit a little bit more of this stone gray. And the reason I'm going back in with the stone gray 
is because as I got to the bottom of the cup, it was just pure white epoxy again, and I want to have a little bit more color. All right, so we're going to pour this. Out. I'm going to start on this end. We're going to pour this out. And then I'm just going to drop my cup. All right, now we're going to come in with the clear. Now look, Kenny, give them a, a look real quick. Now if you're doing a dirty pour, which this is not, but if you were, you would be using quite a bit more material. But you could actually do some really cool effects by doing your dirty pour with a bunch of cups and just doing your mixing like this. Because look how cool that looks. It really does give a soft marble look. Same thing with your white. Kind of the same thing. And then, of course, we have our diamond dust, which is going to give us just enough of that bling. All right. Now, at this point, I have a little bit left in the white. Come in here. Lay that down. All right. Now, at this point, whoops, I forgot a torch. Hold on. My bad. Imagine that. My bad. Ah, oh, grab the wrong one. Okay. All right. Now it's a little cool in here. So that's why I'm torching this before I spread it out. Now, I'm going to take my hand, and like I said, guys, this is not a dirty pour. I'm not trying to get a dirty pour. Because if I were, I'd be using a lot more material. But I also want to be very careful as I start melding this with my hand and not over mix it. Because I still want separation of my colors. And you can still get some very soft marbling. This is really a good technique when you're trying to get a super subtle marble effect. You can really get it soft, get a little bit of that metallic look in there. So I'm talking like I've done this finish before. I've never done it before. <laughs> so I'm acting like I know what I'm talking about. But I have done a dirty pour where I tint my epoxy in the cup, like I just showed you guys. What are you doing, Kenny? Watching TikTok? Uh, no, I'm trying to get my light up so I can. Anybody else a TikToker? Kenny is a TikToker. Let me tell you. All right, guys. So look at this. Is that not absolutely stunning? And how easy was that? I'm going to torch this, babe. Watch out. Is that not gorgeous? And the key to this, guys, is not using too much paint in your cup and being very careful when you meld it. Now, you're going to see some little dots back here. That's because I'm using an old sample board, and it had a bunch of boogers on it, and I just kind of halfway sanded it and threw some paint on. So don't do as I do, guys. Do as I say. Has anybody ever told you all that? Does that sound familiar? Because the way that prices are with lumber right now and MDF, we're using our sample boards over and over and over and over again. What do you say? Okay. So what do y'all think about that? Is that gorgeous? This could be a finish all on its own. But what am I going to do? Somebody finish that sentence for me. What am I going to do? 
tell you what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. We're going to take it to the next step. <laughs> We're going to take it to the next step. I just don't know what the heck the next step is. Oh. All right. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So love, 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 love this. All right. So let's take, this is a marble, a beautiful marble. Um, I tell you what else you can do with this, guys. Instead of using white uh, mica powder, you could do the exact same thing, but use pearl mica powder instead of white. Or even more fun would be to use like an interference color, like a, um, a violet pearl or something, a blue pearl. Something that's going to have a very pretty pearl effect, but when you look at it in a different way, it's going to have a really neat uh, interference color. Check out Erica, uh, her website, Artist Till Death. They have a lot of interference colors and they're really beautiful. And guys, shout out to the best moderators in the business. My whoop, whoop, whoop. Uh, Erica and Clara and Vamp. Everyone say hi to them. They're the best. I absolutely Thank you, ladies. love them. And uh, I couldn't do what I do without them. All right. The reason I'm kind of talking a little bit is I'm, I'm trying to let this set up a little bit before we go to the next step. Because I do want my epoxy to be a little uh, set up before we do what we're going to do next. So while we're doing that, I'll just throw in a little bit of advertisement. So guys, y'all need to check out and sign up for our newsletter on the website. Because we're going to start doing weekly and monthly promo codes that are exclusive to newsletter um, subscribers. And so check that out. It'll be for classes. It'll be for uh, products, all kind of cool stuff. And um, I can't remember what else I was going to say. All right, so let's go. We're going to do... What are you going to do? We're going to do a bagged granite, but we're going to do a bagged granite on top of epoxy that's already poured. Most of the time, it's a little different. yeah. So most of the time, when we do a bag granite, we do the bagged granite on the MDF, and the reason we do that is because there's no epoxy, so whatever we put down, we know it's not going to move. So a bagged granite effect is really good to do on. Um, yes, Mike, I am the forgotten one. On I said at the beginning. No, you, you I just did. said happy anniversary. To you never said, and thank you to the camera guy. Did you ever say that? Okay, I'm telling you, thank you to the camera guy. Oh, okay. All right, you interrupted me. You Sorry, interrupted I was just, I was my explanation. just a little distracted by that comment. Okay, so back to the show. A bagged granite. Bagged granite. Over MDF before epoxy is a great finish to do if you're doing vertical uh, surfaces, maybe a countertop that's got a backsplash that's vertical or going down into a sink because the pattern that you're doing is not gonna run. Obviously, we're gonna do this over epoxy. So what's gonna happen is what we're doing is going to move, but we're gonna kinda, we kinda want that. All right, so I'm gonna come in with the plastic bag. Make sure when you use these plastic bags that you turn them inside out. Don't use the side that's got the ink on it because that will bleed. You will be inked. You will be, <laughs> you'll get inked. So that definitely will get into your finish. All right, so I like to make kind of a rose looking. Mm. You don't, what you don't. Okay, so it's Maybe not. rose colored glasses maybe. on that one. So maybe <laughs> that doesn't not a really rose. look like a rose. But what I don't want you to do is smash it down. Hey, that's really hard in your mic. Oh, so it's not flat, okay? You want it to be very organic and have a lot of texture okay so that's what's going to give it the really cool look all right so we're going to start off with a mid-tone color um actually yep i think we're going to start off so we're going to start off with the same stone gray can you tell i'm making this up as i go guys um we're going to start off with the same stone gray that we started off that i put in the, cup. the opposite of muted yes Mut it is I'm not, okay, that whole muter thing, I guess I'm going to have to have a t-shirt. Uh, All right, so I'm coming in. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to do two colors at one time. Woof, woof. Let's see. So I have the stone gray, and I'm add 
just a couple of little spots of the dark. And we're going to start coming in and tapping it. Now, because we're going over epoxy, the, the paint reacts so cool. It really does give a neat look. So you're going to constantly, this is going to be a really kind of a, a messy, a messy one, guys, because you're constantly going to have to be moving your bag around because you want to constantly have that texture changing. Now we got some darker colors coming in. And as it starts to move, it really starts to look neat. Now, I want you to notice how, see these little lines? I, I want those. So the, the reason those little lines kind of jump in there is because as I'm hitting the bag, I'm kind of letting that epoxy drag. So the bag's kind of picking it up and letting it drag. So some of the areas you want to be very light color and some you want to be very heavy. So I'm going to come back in with my dark. And you can actually kind of do look like little patterns. Um, I went and looked at some granite today, some granite slabs uh, and marble slabs. I went to a, a marble yard, granite yard, whatever you call today? it. Today? Yeah, I went on 46. Without me? Wow. Me and mom went. Awkward. So, <laughs> um, so I was really noticing the, they had one room that had a lot of really unique, granites. I, I, I wasn't really sure how I felt about them, but the more I started looking at it, the more I thought, wow. And then when they told me how much they cost per square foot, I thought, I have got to learn to duplicate that. And one of the finishes that I looked at had big spots of color, but then in a minute I'm going to show you what, what we did, what, what it looked like. They, well, I, I guess what God did, not <laughs> not anybody that was selling it. The pressure? The pressure did. So, now this is messy, guys. So after you do this, you got to clean up your, your paint cans. All right, so I'm not going to do the left-hand side of this because I want to leave this the marble so you guys can kind of see what happens to that marble as it sits. because that's really a pretty finish. All right, so I'm kind of letting this just kind of sit a little bit. I don't want to be in too much of a rush. And like I said, the longer that you wait to do this, the more that that epoxy, it's going to set up and your, your pattern's not going to move as much. So hold on, let me see. Now you will get a few bubbles. And you'll need to torch this after you bag it because those bags will entrain some bubbles. Um, but you don't want to add a lot of heat to this because that heat is going to break up that spray paint. With that, well, we definitely don't want that. All right, so now I'm going to come in with a stick and I'm going to start moving this around and getting some little fracture lines. And it's real important, guys, that you don't do this in any kind of pattern that you just kind of let it move around. And then I was looking at and kind of studying that granite that I took pictures of. And they actually had a piece where it looks like it had little fractures like this. And then every so often it actually look like it had 90 degree marks. Which to me, I wasn't really sure if I liked it or not, but it was complete, it made complete angles. And I didn't, at, when I looked at it, I thought, uh, I just don't know if I like that or not. But this stuff was like 200 and something dollars a square foot. So obviously somebody liked it. I'm gonna hit it really, really quick. 
All right, so I like this. Now, all of this is going to move, guys, so you can't, you can't really judge it at this point. You've got to let it move. You have to let it kind of do its thing. But I'm going to come over here, and if I were doing this and it wasn't alive, I would wait probably 20 minutes or so before I do what I'm fixing to do. Uh, because I know once I do this, it's, go it's going to move. So if you wait about 20 minutes or so, it's going to be less likely to change as, as much. So what I'm going to do now is coming in, I've got um, pearl mica powder mixed with 91% isopropyl alcohol at a ratio of 8 ounces to half a bag of the mica powder that we sell. And the, and the bag itself has half a ounce. So basically a quarter ounce of mica powder and eight ounces of isopropyl alcohol. All right, so I'm gonna come over here. The old Italian drip. Coming in the old Italian drip here. Now because this has pearl in it, I'm not adding a whole lot of texture on top. I mean, of, of, of small, tiny little bubbles that you can really see a lot of the mica powder. It's just going to be very, very subtle. But look what the alcohol does to the spray paint. Now, you want to be super careful and not do too much alcohol. Even though I dripped it, I didn't drip a lot. So let's go over here, Kenny, and I'm going to spray a little bit. Show them just the marble side. So I'm going to also do the same thing on the marble side. I'm going to hit it with a little bit of alcohol. And you're going to see what that alcohol does to the pearl mica powder. So that gives a level of depth. That really is cool. Isn't that pretty? See, I like even kind of how, without the dark, I like how just the light color, the stone gray, starts to very softly come in too. So you can actually take this marble finish and very lightly, very random, come over with this in certain spots and it would look beautiful. If you didn't want a really busy granite, and really a, a busy finish, and you want it to be very soft, we, we could definitely do that. So guys, leave me um, some comments and let me know if you want me to do that right now, if you want me to maybe come across with a little bit of that stone gray into the marble very lightly. Let me know if you want me to do that. Now. They wanna know where your wine is. Well, let me tell you about that. So Kenny and I have started the new year off with a new resolution, Kenny's training for a uh, Spartan obstacle course uh, race. Obviously, I can't do that because of my leg, but I'm right there in there with him. So I'm trying to start the new year off without <laughs> drinking. I haven't drank yet, just like I haven't ordered off Amazon yet. What? So, yeah. Not this whole year I have it. Yeah. So. I gave it a couple days. <laughs> So I'm going to see how long I last. I'm just, we're really trying to do the no sugar and all of that. I've actually cooked four nights in a row. Yes. Four it nights. Actually, it was good. Yes. So all of you that know me and know I hate to cook, just want to say, eat your heart out. So, all right. So I want to add a little bit more to this granite finish. I'm going to come in with white. Now, this is a new What is that? Paint. I picked it up the other day. It is a gloss, okay? So I don't know if they're just starting to rebrand 
The paint, I'm not real sure because it says it's a gloss. It says it's adheres to wood, metal, plastic, and more, just like the regular. So we're going to see. I haven't used it. I'm not endorsing it until I figure out what's going on here. But, and it doesn't say it's a latex. So I haven't seen any of that. All right, so we're going to go back to our bag, and we're going to start adding a little bit of the white. Now, the reason I waited a little longer and didn't put this in right at first is because I kind of want the white to kind of sit on top a little bit and not meld as much at, as the other. And also, you've got to be really careful with your white. You're going to have to keep turning your bag as you chop because if I keep chopping with the same piece uh, of the bag, all I'm doing is going to be picking up these other colors and I'm going to make it super muddy. So I don't want to do that. So I want to con constantly kind of move my bag so that I don't pick up that paint. There. All right. Maybe a little bit more right here. So have we got a consensus if we want me to, to run that across the marble or not? Have you been listening, Kenny? I've uh, been trying. Erica or Vamp or Clara, let us know. Yeah, what do let, you think? Let Kenny know what people are saying. Well, whether, I mean, it's what not we like they're do. talking in my ear, Ron. Well, they can text it. I mean, they can, they can whatever, comment on it. Oh, okay. All right, so I'm going to chop it again. Now I'm going to come over with clear. Where's my clear? Here it is. My favorite color is clear. All right, so now we're really going to get some granification going. And you don't have to do this over the entire piece. If you just want some small granification at some places, you can just hit the alcohol every so often. But I'm going to come in here and very lightly. And guys, I'm literally barely squeezing the the uh, trigger i'm not putting a lot of alcohol at all so you're not trigger happy is what you're saying i'm not mutering it so all right so we're going to let this all soften now all of this guys is going to soften out it's not going to stay super vibrant no, I'm saying um, contrasting. Okay, it's going to be very. It's going to soften out. How? Unlike. What do you mean how? How's it going to get soft? It's going to get because it's moving. Oh. And okay. because I put alcohol, um, it's not going to stay super crisp, like if I did this um, on top of just a substrate without the um, epoxy. So this is going to move. So you cannot judge this right now. You have to let it sit in about. 30, 45 minutes, even an hour, this is going to look really, really soft and really, really cool. So it's a neat way to get a granite, but a softer granite. And i tell you what else you can do is once you've done this and it's cured overnight and then it's, um, it's hard, you can actually at that point come back in with more epoxy, I mean more spray paint on your bag, and then you can get real detailed and you can actually bag over the epoxy that's there, do a flood coat, and you're gonna have so much depth, it's, it's crazy. So what would really be fun is to do that and then come in maybe with an accent color, come over the top. Even another thing that you can do, I'm having all these ideas, you could do a clear flood coat on this and then in that clear coat, hit it with a little bit of uh, spray paint, just a tiny bit of accent color and that would be that would be depth. If you did that, you would definitely still want to put another layer because you don't want to have that spray paint in that top layer kind of sitting on top of the epoxy. Uh, for one, that makes it completely uh, unsafe for food to be prepped on. Uh, also, if you sand it, it's going to scratch. So if you do this, whatever level of uh, layer you do this in, you have to go over the top of it with another layer of epoxy. You could get away with just doing the UTC over the top, but for durability wise, I would 
I personally would do another clear coat. All right, guys, so as this is moving, it is really, come, come in here, Kenny, and look. Look at the, the mica powder that we put down first, the white mica powder. Look how that's peekabooing through the granite uh, color. Isn't that pretty? I, now nah, that's a bonus for me. I love that. I did not expect it to do that. I really, really, really like this. And I love how my fracture lines are starting to soften out. I'm still, I can't decide if I'm wild about the 90 degree, coming over here with the 90 degree. But like I said, that granite that I saw today had those 90 degree um, angles in it. But look at this. Look how this is softening out. So like I said, guys, you have to um, let this set. You cannot judge it right now. You can't even judge it now. You need to come back in an hour or so and, and, and look at this because this is going to be really pretty. All right. Do we have the consensus yeah, on what to do over here? Yeah, go ahead and do that. We want to do that? Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to kind of very lightly do it over the top. I'm not going to do it the whole thing so that we can, oh, shoot, I ran out of bags. Hold on, let me grab another bag because that, that other ones have black all over it. So, or not black, but dark colors. All right, so let's see here. All right, so this is stone gray. All right, so we're just, now th what we want to do, we want to kind of let it, let this drag. Now see how we're kind of letting it drag and it's causing these little lines? That's because I'm doing the opposite of what I told y'all to do while ago. I'm not changing over the bag. I'm letting the bag, I'm, I'm, multi I'm pouncing it multiple times before I readjust the bag, if that makes sense. All right, I think I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want to, there, maybe that looks a little more random. Okay, now because it's so lightly done here, these areas are really going to start getting softer. Hit it with a little bit of heat, not a lot. Oh wow, this is going to look so cool when that starts to really meld out. That's gonna look so cool. You know what, I'm gonna try guys. I've, I've never used a heat gun on this kind of a finish because I've, I've always wanted it to kind of stay together. But I think I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun really quick just to kind of see what it does. It's gonna move. No kidding. Really? Wow. I was just curious if well, you then knew I that. Don't, I don't need to do it if that's all it's going to do is move, right? <laughs> and you wonder how we've been together for 25 years. Uh, Someone's got a sense of humor. Would that be me or you, Kenny? All right, guys. So y'all literally are getting off the cuff stuff here because I haven't practiced any of this, <laughs> literally. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to come in because I don't want to disturb all of it, but I think I'm going to come in right here and just use a little bit of the heat gun, okay? So it's going to get loud. Sorry about that. Off the cuff stuff. All right, so when you're doing your heat gun, it's real important that you move every which way. Don't just go over the top. You want to, as your epoxy starts to heat and starts to ripple, that's when you want to move. You don't want to, and don't come up here like this, way up high. 
and try to do anything because all you're doing is hitting all of the epoxy and you're, you don't have a purpose. You're just making your epoxy hot. So you need to come in here with a real sense of where you want that epoxy to move to. All right, so I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm not really a fan. And I think the reason is, is because I let the, the um, what's my word, but words are hard, my spray paint sit on the top for just a little bit before I grabbed my heat gun. And what happened is that that spray paint starts to dry. And then when it, instead of melding really softly, it starts to crack. It, it, it moves and clumps. Now, if I would have done my bag and immediately hit it with a heat gun, I would have got more of a very soft marble instead of little fracture chunks. But it still looks kind of cool. So I am gonna hit it with some alcohol. I'm gonna hit it with the pearl alcohol. Where's the pearl? Where's my pearl? There it is. All right. Just to kind of see some cool little fractures. All right. All right, so don't like this at all. Don't like that at all. I like, I do like how this is starting to soften. Now, this is a, was about 40, um, about 40 minutes old. So if we would have come over with the bagged granite sooner than when we did, these, these areas of the spray paint would be moving more like what's over here. It would be a little softer, but because it was a little more set up, that's what I mean by if you wait and let your epoxy set up, whatever you put on top is gonna stay there and not really want to move. So it's kind of what look you're going for. Um, I do have some epoxy left in my cup. And my favorite thing to do, my favorite thing to do, <laughs> Kenny's picking all this stuff up because I get kind of messy, is to come with leftover epoxy and run little fracture lines all through my piece. This happens to be the clear with the diamond dust. So these little fractures are going to give uh, just such cool little veins with the diamond dust in there. It looks really neat. And it's so much easier to do that, guys, when your epoxy's been sitting up in your cup for a while. So this has been actually, this is an hour old, all right? Because I mixed this about 6, 40-ish, and it's 7, 40-ish, so. <laughs> now this is the pearl. And this is one way to really get your epoxy, I mean your pieces to have that authentic look with the little fracture lines. And don't overthink it. You don't want to make X's when you do this. Make sure that it's very or organic when you when you do it. I don't think I have any white left. So, all right. And what's really cool about this is all these little lines that you see as this starts to settle out, it's they're going to get very soft. Hold on a second. I'm going to blow this. Out. They're going to get super super soft. And they're just going to be little hints that the eye catches. I think this is really pretty. So honestly, my very favorite step was the very first step that we did when we just kind of moved it out with our hands and left that really soft marble. That just happens to be my favorite fit. I like very, very soft marbles. I'm not a huge fan of veins. I like everything very, very soft and very, very subtle. But I do like this type of a granite because even though it's contrasting, it's starting to soften out. It's not like a hard granite line where everything's very, very hard. I love how this is starting to be soft, yet it still has some real contrasting colors. You could, I could see you doing this and using monotone colors where you just 
barely have any contrast where you maybe have a, a white background and maybe come in with a Navajo white uh, or something where you're sticking in such monotones that it's such a very, very soft, 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 soft granite. So that looks pretty cool. All right, guys. What, what if you, you fogged it? Fog it with what? White. Fog it with white? Maybe. This just... side? Or this, was that your idea? That was my idea. That was your idea? Uh, or with a, maybe a black. Oh, no. Oh, no. We're not going to do black. Um, or maybe we can do black. Guys, let me know. You want me to do white or black? And I'm only going to fog a very small area because I don't want to fog the whole thing. Let me know what you want me to do. White or black fogging. I don't know if I have black paint out here. There's black right there. Yeah. Are you watching? Or the, the gray. Are you watching to see what people say? Okay, so if we do fog this, I just want it on we, the record. We got a lot of whites. A lot of whites, okay. So I, I would say white is the consensus. Okay, so I just, okay, and I'm going to fog with this new paint. Ooh, so there you go, so we can try it out. We're going to see how it works. Um, all right, the whole thing? Sure, why not? Okay, let's see, and I'm going to spritz it with clear because I don't want anything else to... Okay, so here we go. Ready? White is right. Now, I'm not going full opaque. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Hey, you missed a spot over here. I, I wanted to on purpose. I don't oh, want to okay. do the whole thing. Now, white... Doesn't, well, white usually, yeah, it'll lace. It's not going to give the same kind of fracture as when you do black. Also, with white, you have to let it set at least 10 minutes or so before you can 100% um, judge it because it's going to kind of go back together and then it's going to come apart. Unlike your black, your black will actually give you more of a fracture. You're white. See, now see, I'm not liking how this is fracturing at all. It's kind of clumping to me. And I don't, I, you have to be super careful on how much epoxy. I'm sorry. But it's a I'm, different, yeah. it's a different color. It's a different, kind of a different, it's, it, it says I mean, it's, it's gloss. Not, it's not bad, but it is different. But it's not wanting to fracture, because look over here. Now I have to be super careful. If I put too much alcohol on the surface, then it's my whole pattern is going to get very very blurry and i'm not gonna like that so i'm already at that point where mm. i probably put too much alcohol because no it, yeah i promise you because in the morning we're going to come and all this is going to be blurred so if you were going to do this i would say don't use this new white Use the regular Rust-Oleum rust, rust rust White. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I haven't really researched this. So. Well, that's how you work it yeah. out. Yeah. So it does, but see, this is what I was talking about, what the white does. It doesn't really do little fractures. More, it, it does more of like little, la it'll start to clump and do little lacing. That's exactly what I just said. But it, it sounds it better when I oh, say when it. Oh, when you say it? Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like Rhonda said, it laces. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, babe. I love you, too. All right, but look how cool the background is. See, I like that. Because you're still kind of getting that 3D look. Like right here, I love that. Let's go ahead and do a black. Just, we're going to do one little corner. Where are you going to go? Right over here in that corner. Okay, guys, you understand. We probably should have stopped six steps ago, but y'all are encouraging me on, so. All right, so that's black gloss. Now, see the difference when you fracture black spray paint as opposed to your white? Now, we already have a lot of alcohol on this surface, so we're like way past the point where I would feel comfortable 
to keep doing this because we have so much alcohol on top. But you can kind of get an idea. So guys, let me know in the comments, what was your favorite step that we did? What, where would you have stopped? How far would you have gone? And um, let me know maybe what, give me some ideas of what you would have done. Um, I, I really, like I said, I really like the, the first, <laughs> I really like the first step where we did the soft marble and I could actually see doing that and then maybe very lightly running in some veins. Um, that would be a really cool, a cool marble. But anyway, so let me know what you thought. So, Kenny, do you have anything to say? Come over here, babe. Huh? Come over here. I can't give you a big old hug because I'm all sticky. Okay. <laughs> all right, guys. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I couldn't think of a better place to spend my 25th wedding anniversary. So I just want to say thank you in front of all of these people for it, everything that you do. I love you with all my heart, and I thank you for supporting me. So, oh, you're welcome. So. All right, guys. We love you guys. We Thanks, really guys, do. for all the support. Yeah, we, we love you guys so much, and we have so much fun with you. Um, we love the ideas that you always email us, and I may not get to all of them. I do try as much as I can, but um, keep sending those emails. Call us when you need to talk to us, and we are always here for you. And shout out to two special people, Michelle uh, and Mary. Guys, it was great talking to you today. Uh, I'm so proud of you guys. Y'all are killing it out there. And um, all you other uh, former students of ours that are out there killing it, our heart, y'all are like our kids. Our heart just swells every time we see you post and you're, you're building this business and, and just our, our hearts are full. So thank you. And we will see you. Actually, guys, we will not see you next week. Uh, we are leaving Tuesday to go out to Memphis to uh, Susan's house. We are going to bring you some amazing content. We may go live sporadically, probably on Facebook since they're going to be little quick lives. And um, we will bring you uh, some really cool uh, projects that we're going to be working out in Memphis. So next week we won't have a live because we won't be here. So until next week time remember guys don't be scared that's super important don't be scared move forward don't ever let anything push you back if you get down if you get frustrated remember just move forward push through it and always just be creative all right guys love you see you soon bye bye adios i was like you didn't say adios